I'm embarrassed all the time. I think everything is so embarrassing. It was like for me, it was, I was very much of a quiet kid, so I didn't socialize with a lot of people. So in my like I just want to quiet my mind and just like live instead of overthinking. Holding on to the past and just by like letting it go, since mm -hmm. it could really like haunt you by just ruining it. You are listening to Farewell, the Eulogy Project podcast. Hello, and welcome to Farewell, the Eulogy Podcast. My name is Emily. I'm the 11th grade Design for Life teacher at New Design High. And here I have with me three wonderful students. You could introduce yourself. Elisa. Rue. Woo! <laughs> um, so... As you guys know, we've been brainstorming for our eulogy. Some of us have already started our drafts. Um, my first question for you is, uh, what ideas do you have so far about what you want to write about? Um, well, I'm writing about my childhood and like how it changed, how it like shaped me and like how I'm different from it. Yeah. What part of it are you saying goodbye to? Anything specifically? I guess it's like, like just like having freedom, in a way because mm. like, oh, like my childhood is like, I was like I was supervised, but I was like allowed to, how like do more and have like more fun and I had more time to do more fun things mm. compared to now, where it's like, kind of a limited amount of time to do all that stuff. You have more responsibilities. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I feel like most people think that being a teenager usually gives them more freedom, but you're saying you actually have less freedom. Mm, I don't know if it's freedom. Maybe it is responsibility because, like, I have, I have things I have to do now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could still, I could do the things that I did when I was a child, but it's not the same because I have like, other things lined up that need to get taken care of before you can have fun. Yeah. That is a hard thing to say goodbye to, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Aliza, you got any ideas? Um, I'm writing about my past, not even in the sense of just childhood. I'm writing about my past in general, even if that counts like two, five months from now, because mm -hmm. I, I realize I hold on to a lot, like a lot of things instead of trying to like, move past it and letting go I let it still affect me to the same extent that it did say those five months from now so I'm writing about that does it come from a place of like reliving the past or more resistance to change both <laughs> um, reliving the past because I kind of I find a weird comfort in it even if it was bad so I find myself like constantly reliving it reliving it and if it's good I get too stuck on the good if instead of, instead of experiencing the good that I have now and change as I should be used to changes but I'm not because I've I've went through so so many changes but I'm still not used to it and I still hold on to things very dearly because I don't want to let it go even when it's bad yeah wow do you know what um, examples you're going to use in your writing? Do you have any ideas about that? Um, I'll probably, like, bring up my childhood subtly, but I don't want to go that into it. Mm -hmm. I more want to go into, like, the more recent years of, like, late middle school, early high school, and letting all that go since I'm becoming a senior. I love that. Yeah, I think a lot of us do kind of, like, Especially as teenagers, you focus on the early childhood part of your life because it feels still kind of close. But there is so much change happening within even a school year. So much change in who you are and what you want and, you know, what you care about in life, what you look forward to, who you appreciate. Um, I'm sure it's going to be really, really good. Serena, what about you? <laughs> um... Okay, wait, is it about, like, I need to, like... More context? Yeah. So you're writing a eulogy to something that you're letting go of within yourself that you want to say goodbye to. So these are some of the 
like example. Yeah, so you're like, I've become, you know, I've had over the course of my life maybe too much perfectionism and I want to let it go. I've, you know, had extremely high expectations of other people. I resist change. Okay. Okay? Cool. Okay, we're out. So, um, something I want to let go is overanalyzing tendencies because over the last few years, um, it's got me to spiral a lot where it would get me in my own head and that's something I want to let go because it really gets to you when you overanalyze everything that doesn't mean almost anything yes Um, one of my favorite quotes is anxiety is not intuition so the idea that your brain kind of tells you the worst case scenario that doesn't mean it's going to happen right that just means that your anxiety is telling you that yeah um Cool. Did did any of you have like a I want to say breaking point um, with your quality that you were that it just hurt you so bad that you knew it was time to release it and you knew you wanted to change? Um, for me, I kind of went through that, but it's been very on and off for me. Like, I the breaking point, I guess I could put like. March of last year Mm -hmm. and I realized like I knew at that moment I acknowledged my problem which I I knew I had a problem for a while but I actually acknowledged that I want to change it and since then I have been making steps to letting things go and how I deal with situations and all of that but sometimes I will like take a step back and I'm back to reliving the past and holding on to it but I'm noticing as time goes on, like the intervals of me doing it are lessening. Like, because for a while I was doing it for years on end when COVID happened, because I was stuck with my thoughts. Um, but as time goes on, those periods of me dwelling on it are lessening to like months, to weeks, to a few days, and I'm back on track. That's what healing is, right? Healing is not in a straight line. Yeah. I get that. I'm currently going through that right now as well. Like, I've had multiple, like, going on and off of um, ups and downs, and it's honestly pretty hard, but we're going through it. Yeah. Are you getting up? Trying. (laughs) Are you currently on the up track? Trying, yeah. Usually the the warm weather helps. Yeah, it does. (laughs) Um, Elisa, do you have any maybe tips for Sabrina or for our viewers? (laughs) Um... This is like one of the biggest ones for me because I usually, I love giving people advice, I find. One of the biggest ones is that people try to avoid it. You have to feel it. You have to go through the the feelings of whatever it is, the past you're holding on to and acknowledge that. But don't get stuck on it. You need to, I don't really know how to word it because it's easier said than done. You need to go The only way out is through. Yeah, I always say that. You have to feel the feelings, but don't get stuck on it because that's not going to lead you anywhere. You have to feel Mm -hmm. it and then think. Once you feel it until it's like, oh, okay, that's that's that. Then from there, when you start getting to that numb point, you're like, okay, what can I do now? And you start going to the next step. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of reminds me. Well, okay, I think it was James C. He said... If it bores you, don't write about it. And so, like, I was, like, trying to... Or, like, if you can't focus on it. Because, like, this is for the writing aspect. Like, if you choose something and you're, like... Like, it does affect you, but you don't know how to write about it. It's, like, sometimes it's good to continue thinking about it and, like, working up the ideas. But sometimes just you have to move on from the idea. And just, you, you know, everyone has flaws. It's not going to just be one or one thing that happened in the past. There are a lot of things. So just, like, you just need to, like think about the, all of this stuff and like what is like constant in the memories that you think of like that's how I figured it out because I didn't have like it's not like my eulogy isn't about like a negative thing really it's more of like a about just like it's, it's just like losing like your childhood really so it's like well that is it's just letting go <laughs> of the old you right yeah. like the version of you that you were at that point in time and it's kind of like a Coming out of a cocoon, the next one, right? The evolution of yeah. who you are. Yeah, so, yeah, I think, like, you just have to, can't stick to one idea just because it's like, stick out, sticks out to you at first. Like, you have to 
I don't know. You have to think about it a lot more. Mm-hmm. I love that advice too. It was it was really helpful. <laughs> awesome. Um. All right. So my next question for you is. Uh, well, we kind of harp- we kind of spoke about this already, but what what or who helped you with the healing process? Um, for me, I find I have like really bad issues when it comes to like people and attachment and detaching and all of that. And I find that while sometimes it can help when, like, I have close friends that I know I can trust, especially now where I'm at, I know I have friends I can trust that are, I know aren't going to hurt me as much, but I didn't have that at one point. So at that point, I learned to kind of, I don't know how to word this, um, when it comes to healing, not relying so much on people, because I find a lot of people tend to lean into that and they're trying to look for a shoulder to lean on, which isn't a bad thing, but it helps to really take time with yourself for me i would do that in the media i consume at least like if it's making me happy get a show that i really like and if like that show turn it into like a writing hobby a reading hobby i like a game turning into a, a, like a gaming hobby something for me to put my mind in something i can pursue i find that has helped me a lot you also have a lot of creative outlets i feel like as a creative person it's a it's a gift to you know, to not only be creative, but to enjoy creativity. Yeah, you can get a lot of inspiration from other creative things, and it kind of helps you just, it helps to do something new instead of lingering on something old. Mm. It's like rewriting the story. Yeah. I don't know. Um. Uh. <laughs> Can I look at it again? Oh, people wrote stuff. Does anyone else have ideas or um, suggestions on how they healed? Oh, um, I, I forgot the question. I'm not going to lie. That's why I didn't answer. But <laughs> It happens. Um, I guess the people that really helped me were um, my therapist and my mom a lot. Like, she, she's from a different generation, so she doesn't understand most of the feelings I went through because we both had different, like, lives on how... Like, she's had a really traumatic life, and I don't know how that is, but she also doesn't understand, like, how, like, sometimes... Or you know how, like, you have problems outside and then you have problems within yourself? Mm-hmm. She didn't understand, like, that... Um, there were, like, problems within myself that I had to, like, fix, and she didn't know how to help other than, you know, just try to understand. And that's what she did. And it was really helpful because she was like, I still love you. I'm like, oh. Aww. Yeah, I love my mom. <laughs> it's so nice because, you know, I feel, I mean, it's coming from my own experience. I had a very, like, practical mom. She, my mom was, like, a business owner. She was the breadwinner in our family. Very serious person, not, like, she always laughed that, I don't know, she, like, makes fun of the fact that she's a mother because she has no motherly bone in her body. But her way of showing love was always very practical. So when I would go to her with those kind of problems, she felt like she had to fix it, you know, versus oh. what you're saying. Of, no, no, no. That's what my mom does at times, too. She always feels like she has to fix it, so she blames it on herself. And then we have, like, an emotional connection. It's just, like, even better. Oh, because that's your opportunity to say, um, don't worry. Like, it's yeah, okay. yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I always feel like it's... And I, I see this also in other relationships, you know, sometimes with your partner, where if one person kind of is used to fixing problems in a practical way, they're very like, well, why don't you just do this? And then your anxiety will go away. And you're like, I wish it was that easy. Yeah. Were you got anything? I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, like, my mom also helps me. She's, like, the only person I really talk to. But, you know, different times. So things get lost in translation, I guess. (laughs) But I don't know. It's, like, I I think it's, like, the same as, like, or, like, what Elisa was saying. Like, having outlets that just aren't people Mm -hmm. is 
is always like a good something for yourself. I mean, everyone kind of like does that, but like, yeah. Perfect. All right. So our last final question: What advice would you give your younger self? Um. Based on what you're writing about, just to clarify. Go outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Spend like, more time outside. Yeah. Like, honestly, like, when I was younger, I used to be, like, I wanted to be at home. Like, I love being at home, but, like, it gets you in your head a lot more when you go outside and you, like, especially in the warmer times, it's much more easier to get outside and get out of your head and, like, appreciate life a little bit more, maybe. I think because you live for you versus if you're home and you're on social media, you're, you're spending your life watching other people's lives. Mm -hmm. um, I agree. I was... I, Definitely a little more, experience the world more. I was too stuck on what I, whatever I went through in my childhood or whatever I went through currently. And I just, like, I wish I could tell her, like, calm down. It's not the end of the world. Let's, oh, yeah. just, let's just take a walk, go outside, spend time with people, do the hobby. Mm -hmm. Don't get so stuck on it and, like, I was gonna tell her like it's not the end of the world. It, it does get better. I didn't really understand that concept. I truly thought I would be stuck in a hole forever, but I'm like, you have to hit rock bottom to go up. Mm -hmm. So I was gonna tell her it wasn't like you know you, you're gonna be okay. I okay. This is kind of this is crazy, but <laughs> it's kind of the opposite of you guys because okay. So I was outside a lot when I was younger, like a lot. Like my we didn't have a lot of money. We got a lot of scholarships to like do like like nice swimming classes and like ballet and stuff. So I like had opportunities. But I didn't get to do a lot of stuff for myself because it was like my mom. No hate to her. I'm happy I have opportunities. But I don't know what I like. <laughs> and so like that these past few years I've had to like figure it out myself. Which is if you felt like you've just tried everything but you couldn't you can stay with one thing, you just did so many different things. Yeah, like I I like swimming. I'm not in love with it because I'm scared of drowning. I loved ballet when I was younger, like love, love, love. But I have flat feet, so I can't go on point. Mm. And so that broke my dreams. And oh. so like all of like like the things that I had tried, like running, I'm not very good at. It's like I'm. It's like I didn't know like, and I did a lot of stuff with my sister. So it was like very like we're in a we're a pair, mm -hmm. and then she goes off to school, and I. I have to figure out myself. Like, I do have friends, but I don't have things that I, like, don't, I, like, I do for myself. Like, you want your passion. Yeah, like, you know, like, those Facebook people, like, moms, they, like, they have that thing that they like, Gardens. and they join a group, like, <laughs> knitters. Oh, yeah. and, and they, like, they, like, li like, like, they're friends with those people because they like those specific things, and mm -hmm. they only talk about that. Like, I don't have, like, anything. Like, I know I'm not going to find that, but, like, something reminiscent of it because I feel like I'm going from thing to thing like not knowing what I like and like not being able to decide so I like I think I want to like I would tell myself like just like try to figure out your own self it's like my, it's not like a big deal but it's like something that's like kind of small that just kind of bothers me because I have to I know that feeling I'm the same way I, guess, yeah. I feel like I feel mediocre at a lot of things like, I'm kind of good at cooking. I'm kind of good at drawing. I'm kind of good at writing. I'm kind of okay at some sports. But there's nothing, I mean, I think it's, I would love to find a hobby, too. It's a hobby, right? Yeah. yeah. I feel like I'm lucky that I have my passion in my career. Mm -hmm. But I agree, finding a hobby is hard, and it might take you years. I'm almost 30, and I still don't really know what hobbies I have. When people ask me, I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. TikTok? I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's hard. Uh, all right. Thank you, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye. Bye. 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 You've been listening to Farewell, the Eulogy Project Podcast, a Spark Studio production.